In the previous video, we walked you through the process of generating a lead from scratch. Now that that lead has been created, you can create an Aurora proposal. Open the lead and click New Aurora Proposal. You'll be asked to confirm the same information that you entered when building the lead. Make sure that the pin is dragged to the correct location. If the information is correct, click Confirm. This will open up Aurora's sales mode. Once sales mode is open, you will once again see the information that you created in the lead. Please take note that any of this information can be changed at this screen with the exception of the address. Once you've started a proposal in Aurora, the address is locked into that lead. If you have an incorrect address, you'll need to create a new lead from scratch in Lightspeed and input the correct address. Any of the other information can be changed. Let's take a look at some of the options we have on screen. The exit to CRM button is a button that you'll use when your proposal is complete and you're converting it to project. At any point in time, you can click this dollar sign symbol and that will bring you to the screen that allows you to add adders and price your project. This is your current offset for your system design. We've not designed a system yet, so this is currently sitting at 0% offset. At the top, you'll see a question mark that has help center resources, a live chat, and your ability to reach out for support. Let's click start proposal and take you to the energy usage screen. In the previous video, we talked about the ability to add the energy usage while building a lead. Because we did not do that, we're going to enter it now. If you have 12 months of kilowatt hour usage, you can enter it in the corresponding month. If you only have a few months of usage, enter what data you have. So for this proposal, let's say the homeowner moved in in May and has been receiving their power bill for those months. When you've entered in the usage, you can click the estimate tool and it will estimate the usage for the months that you do not have available. I do wanna direct your attention momentarily to the utility rate. Here's where you'll choose the corresponding utility with the area in which you're selling. Also, many utilities have what's called a post solar rate. This is a rate of energy that the homeowner will have after they've installed solar. This does not apply to every utility but check with your dealer manager or regional to find out what the post solar rate is for your region. In addition, when I click done, it's going to tell me the customer's current average bill and what their grid use is and any fixed costs associated. You can also click 30 year average to give the homeowner an idea of what the cost of doing nothing, meaning not going solar would cost them over 30 years. Uh, I know, that this particular utility charges much more than 12 cents per kilowatt hour. So if I go to the usage details, under the utility rate, I know that this utility charges 15 cents. So I will choose 0.15 to attach a custom rate plan that is more accurate to the current rate details for this utility. Once I've changed the utility rate, I can click estimate, and clicking done, will then adjust the energy bill based on the updated custom rate. In the next video, we will discuss how to build an Aurora proposal using their panel placement tool and roofing tool. Thanks. We discussed how to enter energy usage and custom rate plans. If you haven't had a chance, please go back and take a look at that very important step in the Aurora proposal building process. Once you've completed entering the usage and clicking next, there will be a few informational slides that you will need to work through with the homeowner to show them how solar works. The first one being traditional power and how utilities typically charge for power. There is also a slide about how solar power works during the day and how it works in the evening. 
The next slide talks about the benefits of going with Freedom Forever as your solar provider, including the options available, our 25-year production guarantee, and tax benefits. The next two slides talk about our partnership with Vivint Smart Home and the different packages that are available to homeowners if they decide to sign with us and go with Freedom Forever as their solar installer. These packages will have the different equipment combinations and typically what their monthly cost would be if they had gone with Vivint outside of going with their solar project. When you reach the next page, you've arrived at Aurora's Roof AI. The tool that Aurora uses to detect roof planes and allows you to build your solar panel system for the homeowner. If this is the first time that you've reached this page, you'll be prompted to run their roof AI. So let's do that now. As you can see, Aurora is going through the process of detecting the roof structures. In the event, in the unlikely event, that it does not properly detect the roof structures, you can click the home button on the left-hand side here and request an expert model. If you are in home, choose expedited. If you need a standard expert model, choose standard. Standard takes roughly three hours. Expedited is about 30 minutes. If you need an expert model, please note that an actual person will go through the process and design this roof rather than using the AI process. Once Aurora has detected the roof planes, you will be able to place panels on the roof. Now would be a good time to refer to the adder sheet in the Sales Resource Center to locate what the current base model panel is. At the time of this recording, that is the Freedom Forever 400 watt panel. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to choose the panel placement tool and choose panel type. I'm going to choose the Freedom Forever 400 watt panel and place. You can change the orientation to portrait or landscape and also have a filler row. That's automatically on. If you want to turn that off, you would do that here. Once I click place, Aurora's AI will place the correct amount of panels on the roof to get me as close to 100% offset as possible. You will see a max fit of how many panels can fit on this roof, but some of them are grayed out because they don't get the project to 100% offset. While I have this up, I want to show you that you can click and drag over panels to remove or re-add them to your project. This will help you, or you can individually click them as well. This will help you customize the home design with the homeowner if you're doing this process in the home. So let's say the homeowner only wants the panels on the back half of their home. So we're going to choose all panels in those locations. As you can see, as I click and unclick panels, it will show me how close I am to 100% offset. So we have a few more to go to reach 100%. Once your design is complete, you can click finalize. Before we leave this screen, I wanna show you the ground mount tool, which is located below the panel placement tool. Here, I can click and drag the corners and adjust the size of a potential ground mount in the event that you're selling a ground mounted project. If I want to remove that ground mount, I can click delete. So at this stage, I've removed all of the panels from the roof because I want to show you the tools on the lower left-hand side that are available to all reps. When we click this panel, we'll see a radiance, LIDAR, trees, rulers, and sun path. When we click irradiance, it will calculate the irradiance, which is the amount of sun that each roof plane receives. This will help you in building the system to give the most impact for placing panels in locations that get the most sun exposure. In addition, there is the LIDAR tool that is a mixture of sun and shade. In properties where there's a lot of trees and potential for shading, the LIDAR tool is a good tool to demonstrate where shade is present and why you're designing the system the way that it is. The third tool I want to show you is the Sun Path tool. When we click Sun Path, you have two options the path over a month to month basis or a hour by hour basis. So let's take a look at the Sun Path for the next six months for this property and where that sun will be located in each one of the months. We can also press play 
on the hour by hour to show how the sun passes over their house in the 10th month of the year over a 24 hour period. Again, all of these tools are great for demonstrating to your homeowner how the sun moves in their property and why their panel system is designed the way that it is. To turn off sun path, we click on the lower left hand again, uncheck sun path, and it will resume into the roof. I will turn off the LIDAR tool, and now I'm going to design my system with an emphasis on placing the panels in the area where the highest impact. You will see the offset for this project increase as I place these panels. Okay, so I've now designed my system to meet 100% offset. If I click this drop down menu, it will show me my energy offset, what's provided by solar, and what's provided by grid based on the usage information, how many panels that's required for that system, and what how, how much power that system will produce. I'll click Finalize. It's going to save that design, recalculate the irradiance, and give me a final output number. Click Next. In the next video, we will talk about pricing your system, the different loan options, and how to convert this project into our project generator tool. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.